Lieutenant, you said yourself there's nothing wrong about all this. Then why did you come here? Because things have changed. Yesterday, Rod Collins took part in the jailbreak. Oh. Now, two of the three men who escaped have been recaptured. Collins is still loose. He's escaped? Oh, dear heavens. Well, why should Margie be involved? What has she to do with this? Simply this, Miss Lowen. Collins would want a place to hide. He'll need money. He'll need help. He has no family, no friends we know of. It seems logical he'll head straight here for Margie. What can we do? Please don't be alarmed. He'll expect an ally, not an enemy. He'll probably be armed. But if you're calm, you'll be all right. If he gets this far. Now, chances are we'll catch up with him before he does. But if he does try to contact your niece, we'll have officers staked out nearby to pick him up before there's any trouble. Thank heavens, Margie isn't here. Yes, that's a break for us. Uh, you might as well give me her address, just in case. Well, I really don't know it myself. All I know is that it's someplace in Larchmont, the home of a girl named Gloria Baker. Well, if you don't know it, I'm sure Collins won't. What can I do? We're sure we'll be able to stop Collins in case he gets within striking distance of your house. Well, pretty sure anyway. If we don't, I'll give you a number for you to call. And one other thing, Miss Lowen. I wouldn't call your niece and tell her about this. She might do something foolish. No, no, I wouldn't dream of telling Margie. You expect to hear from her this weekend? Well, she said she might call me tonight around 9 just to tell me she's all right. I see. Well, we'll keep in touch in case there are any further developments, Miss Lowen. Lieutenant. Yes. This won't have to come out, will it? I mean, about Margie's letters to this man? Not if we can help it, Miss Lowen. Thank you, Lieutenant. Now, look, lady, listen. Listen to me. You've got to see how it is. I really love your niece. I love her. I wouldn't hurt her for anything in this world. I just want to see her. I just want to... I just want to talk with it. Now, now you got to help me. I can't. All right. All right, now listen to me. You know how old I was when they shoved me in a pen up there? I was 18 years old. And you know how long I've been up there, lady? I've been up there for nine years. You know how rotten lonely you can get in a prison? With a thousand other guys all around you. You're lonely. You know what loneliness can do to you, lady. I do. I do know. Oh, you just think you know. You don't know nothing, lady. I mean, you don't know nothing at all. No, now listen. Look, lady. When Margie and me started writing those letters, it was like I come to life again. I mean, I was up there dead. I was buried. Margie wrote these letters to me, and she made me alive. Don't you see that? Maybe Margie was trying to be kind to you. She was always a kind girl. Even as a child, she was always bringing home stray cats and sick animals. But that's something different from love. You must see that. I'm no sick animal, lady! I'm a human being just like you are. You don't know, Margie, even if you think you do. When her parents died, she needed someone to love. Well, at first there was me, and then as she grew older, she needed something else. But this isn't real love that you're talking about. I'm gonna make it real. Don't you see that, lady? That's exactly why I broke out. I gotta make it real! And how long would it last? You can't go on running forever. I know. I know that lady, and I'm going to take her away with me. We'll, we'll just leave the country, and Margie will go with me. I know she will. Even if she would, how could you live? Could you make a living? Do you even have a trade? Yes. I was in a prison machine shop for nine years. I was the best slave man there. I could walk in any job, any place in this country right now. With one eye on your work 
and the other watching for the police. Margie isn't made for that kind of life. You can't ask her to do it. If you leave right away, you'll have a much better chance of getting away. And you must forget about Margie. Maybe if I could just see her. I just want to see her, just want to look at her just for one minute. I'm afraid that's impossible. Oh, I gotta see her! I went through a lot to see you, lady, and you ain't gonna stop me. I can't help yes, you. Yes, you can. You can call her for me and don't tell me you don't know where to reach her. Because I won't believe that. All right. I'll call her for you. Hello. This is Margie Lowen's aunt. Could Margie come to the phone? Yes. Is Collins there? Just answer yes if he is. Yes, yes, that's right. Does he have a gun? I don't think so. All right. Now keep him talking to you. Try to hold him there as long as you can. I'll have a squad there right away. So you were going to call Margie for me? I tell you, you want to help me by calling the cops. Please go away. We can't help you here. Please go away. I think I'll let you get away with this. You think you can double cross me just because you're Margie's aunt? Don't come any closer. Don't come any closer. <laughs> Dearest Rod, I've just learned from my aunt about what happened, and I can't tell you how grieved I am by your dreadful experience. Will you think me terribly hard-hearted when I make this confession? I'm glad you're back in prison, Rod. Glad that we still have these letters to share between us. These letters that have come to mean so much to both of us these past two years. My darling, my poor darling. 